Tell us a little bit about um, the Shah's personality. Um, one thing that comes through in the film, it's uh, highly secretive because um, in, that, in any part of the world, particularly that part of the world, you don't want to show vulnerability to your enemies, to those, um, and you want to project strength. But, but also there was a, he had a very secretive nature about him, it seemed, with this illness. Um, what was going through his mind, do you suppose, as, as things started maybe back as early as 68 when he was, when he was told or, or maybe realized and, and uh, to the end? What, was, what game was he playing politically, emotionally, psychologically? I can't say for sure. I, I wasn't in the, there and I, and I hadn't had a chance to interview him. But, you know, the secrecy came from his own insecurity. Uh, and I don't think it was as much what the Iranian people thought of him as what the West would do if they found out about his impermanence, impermanence and his mortality. Uh, he wanted his uh, dynasty, his son and his wife to rule. Uh, and you know, for many years, he was our guy in the Middle East. The U.S. put him in there and, and he was doing everything that the U.S. wanted him to do with, with respect to Russia and the Middle East. And this illness, uh, I think it, it, it shook him. Uh, it made him feel like he's got, he doesn't have enough time to achieve what he wanted to achieve. Uh, he kind of walked off the reservation as far as the U.S. with dealing with uh, the Russians and, and, and uh, Saddam. Uh, and I think it was a motivating factor for him in, in, for him to change his behavior. That's a, that's a story of of one pivot, of the central uh, political leader of the time. But tell us about um, about President Carter. He's faced with a number of dilemmas from a number of different angles, um, all all sort of honing down on him uh, as this maelstrom is sort of uh, swirling around, and he's trying to figure out, uh, you know, what do we do with this one-time ally. Well, President Carter is an interesting story. A lot of Iranian Americans, uh, they're very hard on him. They're very critical of him. And I used to be, before I started this story, I kind of had the same attitude. But, you know, you kind of look at what President Carter was faced with. Uh, he was faced with a Shah that was taking five Valium a day. He was no longer in control. Uh, you look at his options. Uh, his options were the Queen. Uh, and you saw M Mr. Zahedi, the U.S. ambassador, saying he didn't think she could... Uh, maintain control. Uh, there was no precedent for a female monarch in a Muslim country, particularly in Iran. Uh, then there was his son, uh, which uh, most people knew he was he was not of age and he couldn't kept the, kept the control. Uh, then there was the military, and you see from General Heuser's book, he went there. The U.S. was actually hoping one of these generals could step up and take control, uh, but uh, they didn't have the personality. They weren't the type of people that could that could do that. Then there was the democratic uh, forces of Bazargan, and you saw, you know, we, we tried uh, 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 supporting them, the, the democratic forces. They couldn't keep control. Uh, they didn't have the manpower to keep the control. Then, uh, of course, there was the, Ru the Russians and the Soviets. That was the biggest fear. You didn't want communism. Then there was, there was the, the clerics and Islam, and at that time... Uh, you know, political Islam hadn't been created in the Middle East. This was the advent of political Islam. And a lot of people that were proposing the Islamic Republic, they were the proponents of it, they were Western educated, uh, they were educated in the West. And we thought this was going to be kind of a Islamic light, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a constitutional government there. And Khomeini was going to go to Qom, and he's going to be the spiritual leader. Um, it didn't turn out that way. Uh, I don't think uh, we had a clear idea of political Islam, its ethos, and what it what it stood for. Uh, time has kind of uh, answered that question a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're in that period, we're we're tumbling to the last through the last decade of the Cold War, and we're beginning to see a world that's going to splinter along other lines, um, and and the rise of of political Islam or, or radical Islam, and what it's going to do to the Middle East, and then em emanate out. Um, but what was the uh, do you suppose some of the some of the real miscalculations? Well, the miscalculation was the lack of understanding for political Islam, uh, not realizing that that uh, uh, you know it's not nationalist; uh, it's it's an expansive force. Uh, I think the same same uh, calculations and misunderstandings that were made in 1978, they were made in 2009. Uh, I remember here when I was on the radio in 2009 doing radio programming and there was a green movement in Iran 
and there was a grassroots indigenous movement of the people of Iran demanding freedoms, demanding uh, freedom of thought, freedom of religion, freedom in politics, freedom for women. Uh, you know, it was not anti-Islamic. It, it was just a grassroots movement of people uh, wanting freedoms. And uh, it was surprising to me that at that time, uh, President Obama uh, came and he stuck out his hand for Ahmadinejad to shake uh, at a time where uh, you know that that regime was uh, at its knees. And it was the same calculation again because it was a dangerous time. And in President Obama's defense, uh, he believed he was making peace at a time where war was uh, inevitable. Uh, the Israelis were ready to bomb uh, Iranian nuclear sites, uh, and he made that same gambit of, of uh, uh, trying to strike a difference between moderates and hardliners uh, in the regime. And I think that's been tried year after year many times in the last 40 years by successive uh, administrations. Uh, and I don't think it's, it's a rift that, that is going to be created. I think if you want to create a separation, it has to be between the people uh, and what they want, uh, and this theocratic regime. I don't think uh, you know that calculation of you know uh, hardliners and moderates. It hasn't it hasn't worked. It's, it shows a lack of understanding for what's going on there.